morning afternoon and evening wherever you are in the world thank you for joining us for today's webinar quality assurance for salesforce my name is lakshya rawat a passionate business development executive at cloud energy before we start with this amazing webinar it would be an honor to introduce cloud energy before you cloud energy is a leading salesforce development and consulting company that offers Salesforce customization, integration, and migration services. And if you're looking for help with your Salesforce related projects, Cloud Energy is here to help you with the out of box services and solution to meet your business goals. And I have a few housekeeping items before we dive into the content. Okay, so these are just some quick guidelines before we get started. As you have probably already noticed that your microphone have been muted and they will be muted throughout the webinar. However, we encourage you to ask questions throughout and please use the question box or chat box and you can also raise your hand as indicated in the slide. And I will be moderating questions and we have a QA session once we were through the presentation. And this is how we are going to run. We have two QA rounds where you can ask questions to our speaker. Then we have a live demo and then we have retrospective round where you can suggest some suggestion or feedback about our webinar. And now uh, introduce speakers, uh, Malika, who is the chief operating officer at Cloud Energy. And we also have Somia, who is the chief innovation and process officer at Cloud Energy. And along with Somia, we have Aman. Aman, who is the QA engineer at Cloud Energy and they are going to share some amazing ways to help your access scalable value for your success driven business. And now without further delay, let me now hand over this session to uh, Malika, Somia and Aman. Hi all, thank you for joining this webinar today. My name is Aman and I'm gonna give you a small uh, overview and a quick demo on a testing tool called Tosca. So stay tuned till the end. Thank you. Hello all. Thank you for joining in the webinar. I am Swamya Tyagi. I'm working as Chief Innovation and Process Officer at Cloud Anology. And today I'll be focusing on some of the points like uh, what is what are the advantages of QA in, for the product and what is risk management with QA and what is automation and manual testing and what are the advantages of QA. Looking forward uh, for, for all your questions. Thank you. Hello everyone. Um, I'm Malika and I've been associated with uh, Cloud Energy since the beginning and I'm working here as the Chief Operating Officer. I am also um, a Certified Scrum Master and a Certified Product Owner. So let me start by presenting my screen. Okay. Yep. So guys, uh, I've already told you about myself. Um, and uh, today I will be talking about uh, these agendas, uh, which are what, are, what is quality analysis, uh, then roles and responsibilities of uh, QA, um, then best practices to be followed, and challenges that are being faced by a QA. But uh, before starting my session, I would like to first uh, thank everyone for joining our today's webinar, and um, and we hope you find it interesting and informative. Also, um, I'd like to inform everyone, as it's mentioned uh, before as well, that. Um, there will be a joint uh, Q&A session uh, with me and Somya where we'll be together um, answering your questions. But in case uh, during um, any of the time, you know, during my part or uh, during Somya's part, if you have any questions, please um, leave them in, in the question box or uh, raise your hand in, uh, and then, you know, we'll be, we'll be um, answering your questions um, as much as possible after Somya's part. All right. So, um, Let's start without delaying any further. All right, so first, uh, what is quality assurance? So quality assurance can be understood as the maintenance of a desired level of quality 
in a service of product especially by means of attention to every stage of the process or of delivery or production quality assurance can be also understood as a way of preventing mistakes and defects in manufactured products and avoiding problems when delivering products or services to customers which iso 9000 defines as part of quality management focus on providing um, confidence that quality requirements will be fulfilled uh, the terms uh, quality assurance and quality control are often um, used inter interchangeably so for example the term assurance is often used as uh, implementation of inspection and structured testing as a measure of quality assurance in a television set software um, and the term control could be used as um, to describe the fifth phase of define measure analyze improve control which is called uh, dmaic model this model is a data driven quality strategy used to improve processes so um, quality assurance uh, basically helps us in ensuring uh, conformance to customer satisfaction it helps in providing and maintaining continuous improvement of the product uh, it ensures user satisfaction and uh, it it helps us in maintaining the, the delivery speed the next part uh, that i will be covering is uh, roles and responsibilities of a quality analyst so um in this part um the quality the roles and responsibilities that i will be talking about are a bit more generic and basic but of course um, these can be changed uh, based on the process and and the level of depth that a company is looking for so the first point here is uh, data analysis which would mean able to collect and analyze data to identify trends and detect problems and key issues second point uh, would be judgment and problem solving which would mean able to define decision criteria and determine the most appropriate course of action so, uh, so third point would be planning and organizational skills uh, which would mean able to establish objectives and schedule tasks and resources efficiently our next point would be communication skills uh, which would mean strong uh, written communication skills to provide a uh, concise and clear documentation here i would also like to add um, strong verbal skills because sometimes in a company um, encourages their QAs uh, to interact with the client and and you know have a direct interaction with them so in that for to, you know, to fulfill that purpose it is important that a QA is very good in verbal communications uh, last point here uh, would be attention to detail and quality ori uh, orientation which would mean able to accurately check processes and outputs now quality assurance checklist may include uh, establishing SQA facilitation implementing a quality management process conduct a process review creating a report on the project status performing a process compliance review identifying process improvement areas and creating a process uh, training for uh, for the project now um the next part that I will be covering is uh, best practices that are a must, I think, according to me. And here are uh, some of the points that I covered. Again, guys, these are very general. And these are uh, a company must change these uh, points you know, based on the process and, and the requirements that they need to fulfill. The first point, according to me, uh, is understanding the business goal. Then uh, make acceptance criteria clear. Uh, know your supported platforms. Then prepare a test plan, use test cases or checklists, use continuous integration plus continuous deployment, keep test cases or checklists updated, share release notes with your clients, and never forget about exploratory testing. Above all, uh, communication skills and proactiveness is a must. Uh, keep, keep in mind that this is a process uh, one has to uh, regularly review for efficiency and improve as they move through uh, different cycles of a uh, project. Now, uh, the next part is uh, challenges that are uh, normally faced by a QA. So first point here uh, would be quality uh, assurance culture. Now, uh, quality requires a change in how it is being conducted. This also implies an intense transference in the organizational culture as well. 
it is very important and also challenging to think of innovative ways of identifying unique techniques to test the software quickly and efficiently. This will enable us to continuously ensure quality while also growing and evolving the QA services provided. Second point uh, would be facilitation of quality. From a DevOps perspective, the QA team needs to understand the business for the system being verified. Uh, for this to happen, the QA team should partner with business uh, experts, including the product owner, to understand uh, how the system being tested needs to function in order to support the business. QA teams will be disabled if not involved in those initial discussions. This involvement helps QA to become the facilitator of the quality. Next is um, collaboration. QA is the binding entity between uh, development and operations. So the QA team should be involved right from the early stages of development. This will enable them uh, to collaborate, have a software developed and supported more effectively. Also, QA should be uh, considered as a responsibility of the entire project team rather than the responsibility of a dedicated QA team. Then the next point is early testing uh, in this. I think one of the main objectives of testing uh, is early detection of defects in the development cycle. And for this to happen, testing must begin very early in the cycle. QA should begin testing with whatever code is available, even if the features are not complete. This requires a lot of maturity in documenting self-sufficient uh, user stories that do not depend on another for testing. Then uh, build verification. So uh, there is a higher possibility of code breaking um, in existing features. And for this reason, it is not practical to have testers uh, to, to do the verification manually. It is recommended to rely on automated testing for those um, smoke tests. Next, uh, next is um, test coverage. So there's always a rush to deliver software quickly with techniques like continuous integration and deployment. Also, because of rapidly changing requirements, there is a possibility to miss testing critical functions. To overcome this challenge, uh, a thorough and detailed traceability of requirements to test functions uh, should be maintained. Next is uh, time to market. Now, the time to market is the deciding fate of a product, like continuous delivery and the need to produce the product in the market in a shorter period of time with support after the product has been released with lesser turnaround time is a performance factor. To increase the product release and turnaround speed and to improve uh, error detection before production, end-to-end -end testing cycles with complete automation uh, boosted by frameworks have to be in place. Now, end-to-end -end testing methods uh, such as quality engineering uses tools like uh, Selenium or uh, cloud testing integrated with other stakeholders in a product development cycle uh, to complete time-consuming testing phases in a shorter period of time by testing early and testing often. Uh, the last point in this would be skilled resources. Now finding the right kind of testers to integrate with other stakeholders to perform uh, course codes and have more knowledge of programming hasn't been a necessity in the older QA methods. The traditional QA professionals had the mandatory domain uh, knowledge and took care of testing on a need basis uh, by concentrating mainly on testing the product towards the end of the product uh, development cycle. Quality engineering uses skill testers that have extensive knowledge of performing test cases for automation, coding and programming when reverting to developers can take access time. An integration with stakeholders from design until production and providing ample support after the products are being used by customers which is more advantageous uh, than the traditional QA. Um, now guys, um, all of the points that I covered in this session are more basic and uh, on a generic part because um, these points uh, varies from company to company and process to process which, you know, which they want to follow and they want to cater to. So um, I hope this session was uh, informative and interesting for you guys. Uh, thank you so much for listening and now I'll be handing over to Soumya. Soumya, over to you. Leka, just a second.
so i will be starting my uh, today's agenda so my today's agenda is advantages of qa for any product then i'll be uh, covering risk management with qa then i'll be giving you some salesforce testing tips then i'll be telling what is manual testing what is automation testing and what are the advantages of automation testing over manual testing so these are the all the points which i'll be co uh, covering in today's webinar so let's move forward with the advantages of qa for any product so here are some there are many points which uh, you can consider as advantage of qa but there are few points which i have listed down below uh, some bullet points which will be helping which will uh, let you know that these are the main advantages of qa for any product so first one comes here is save your money yes of course if we are adding any qa in our product be it any product so it saves our money because uh, it's in the sense that if we are queuing any product we are found uh, we are finding any bugs or anything which uh, can cause problem in future so instead of uh, pouring in money then there we can we can save that time we can save that money uh, after uh, you know before uh, beforehand itself and we can have uh, all the parameters with us in which uh, we can list down the points and we can uh, get them resolved before uh, it's very late so in that sense it saves our money uh, for for our future concern we are predicting our bugs we are finding out the bugs and all other issues in advance and we don't have to put extra money uh, uh, or time to solve that so in the, in that sense it is saving our money then uh, next point is it's it prevents the catastrophic corporate emergency what does that mean that means if our system sometimes uh, while we are working on it it shuts down the information discrepancy uh, there sometimes there is missing information all these things if we are going to check in advance then we can uh, have an advantage that we don't have to feel uh, face such failures uh, after handing over our product to the client so it uh, adding adding qa in advance is you know prevent all these issues then comes it in, inspires clients uh, client confidence which is really true in in the sense it inspires the client confidence that we are assuring that we are giving you product which will be mostly bug free which which will not create a, a simple issue while we are uh, handing over uh, to you which will be uh, working fine in certain situations we are giving him the proper report and parameters in which will be uh, we will be testing the same so it boosts up the uh, client's confidence then comes maintains great user experience yes in the sense that qa will uh, a quality analyst will test the product in every manner he can not in one manner he will test the, uh, the product in every scenario and more be uh, like on user basis how we can make the product more user friendly so which will maintain the user experience as well and which will be user friendly then the point comes it brings in more uh, profit yes it in the sense because it is saving our money that completely implies that it is, it is bringing more profit if we are uh, queuing our product so that uh, we need uh, we need not have to spend uh, we need not have to spend money unnecessarily on any bug or any issue which uh, we will be fixing after our product is made we can fix that issue while our product is made so in that sense it brings in more profit then it boosts the customer satisfaction that is the foremost point and you can say the uh, main point because we are ensuring certain scenarios to him that in these uh, scenarios your product will never fail and it will not uh, it is not going to create any embarrassment or your product will not be uh, will not be you uh, will be sorry will be used in certain uh, situations and it will be running perfectly fine in all these parameters so it boosts the customer satisfaction in a way that we are ensuring him we are giving him confidence that your product will be working fine next comes the it promotes organization productivity and efficiency 
if we are testing the product in several scenarios in several uh, situations then its productivity and efficiency will definitely be uh, you know be consistent so these are all the advantage of qa for any product and uh, there i'm sure there will be more advantage but these are the main advantage by adding uh, by having qa for any product now next i will be moving that uh, risk management uh, management with qa but i would like to tell you about what is risk risk uh, is nothing but it is the future of uncertainty among events that have a probability of occurrence and a potential for loss that means if we are uh, if if i can say in layman's language risk is something which is sometimes uh, uh inevitable or sometimes it is inevitable sometimes we can prevent risk but sometimes risk is too much higher that we can only uh, prevent its consequences or we can prevent uh, more harm uh, to the product but we cannot certainly uh, eliminate or eradicate that risk so to to protect business interest the quality of software applications qa tester must be able to quickly and accurately identify and manage software testing risk now next part comes is risk management with qa so risk management with qa is we have four terms uh, all in all which are identify evaluate treat and monitor so what does first part identify you know shows us identification is why uh, we need to identify the risk that uh, what kind of risk it is and in which situation it can occur uh, sometimes uh, you can say uh, risk occurs when we have a tight deadline sometimes risk uh, can occur if we are very uncertain of the scope of the product so there are certain parameters on which we can identify the uh, risk so this this way we can identify the risk then comes the part for evaluation then for evaluation for, uh, once we have identified the risk then we need to evaluate that that in which cert, in these situation we need to pen down all the things that uh, in these situation in these times and and uh, like after this this uh, parameters these risks can occur so we need to evaluate that so it will be helpful we can have a report for the same and we can depict uh, that to the team as well as to the client as well that we can we have identified the risk and we have evaluated them we have a report and we need to treat them properly so that uh, it will be helpful in future we we can eradicate these risks in advance then we need to treat the same for the treatment we need to tell it to the team and they will fix the same and all the risk should be properly documented and properly told uh, to the team so that they, they uh, can properly treat that and after that comes the part for monitoring the monitoring part is where once the risk is treated by the team as they quoted it we need to monitor that continuously uh, we need to take we need to have a proper uh, we need to uh, take a proper indication or we can say a proper uh, uh, we need to keep an eye that uh, the product should be working fine in all the situations that we mentioned prior as a risk and it should not uh, there should not be any other risk uh, in future so ne we need to uh, monitor it for a, for a time being so this was about the risk management now i will be telling you that what is the risk management process it comprises of five things which is plan track control identify and analyze in planning we what we do is we we first identify the uh, risk then we need to plan that how uh, we are going to move further because without planning anything we we uh, just having uh, nothing we are, we will have nothing in our hand so we need to plan first we may, we need to make a blueprint for the same that how we will be we will be moving further for such and such risk then we need to track those that at what time and and in what situations the risk is coming so that we have a proper report to give to the team and they can have uh, they can they can have a check on 
the real scenarios and they can treat it well and uh, they can fix it. For controlling, once we have tracked down the risks, then we need to control it. We need to control in a way if there is a risk which we can control and we, which we can eliminate from the product, it will be really helpful if we have noted down all the things. But there are some risks that uh, we, we, can't, we cannot eradicate them. Pro, uh, as you can say, we cannot eradicate uh, them. We can just prevent their consequences that it will not harm the product in a big way. So there are there we need to control things like that. Now next part comes is identify. Now we need to identify the things between that we have planned, we have tracked, we have controlled certain things. But we need to identify the things that there there should be a, a fine line. Once it is controlled, we need to see that it in what manner. Uh, the team has treated the risk in what manner it has affected the product in a right manner or in a wrong manner if, uh, if is the is the treatment which has been given to the uh, uh, given to the product by the team is working fine or not and then we need to analyze that all by all these things that we have done till now the product is working uh, fine in all the situations or not if it is working fine and and then there are no such more conditions that it is uh, there should be any risk in future so these are the uh, these are the things which we have a proper process for risk management then the part comes for salesforce testing tips so there are many tips uh, for testing apps in salesforce but there are certain tips that i would like to give you so my first thing is there are six types of testing that you uh, must do in Salesforce and I know these are the very basic and very common name that I'm going to take and you all will be, uh, will be familiar with that. That is one is UI testing, then functional testing, regression testing, system testing, integration testing and then lastly system integration testing. All these testing needs to be done needs to be done uh, very thoroughly in Salesforce in order to get your Salesforce app tested very well. Then, part, then the part comes uh, for, then my next tip is automation testing can also be uh, enforced on Salesforce by using uh, tools like Tosca or Selenium. Or there are many other tools which you can use, but I'm naming these two uh, tools as uh, we are using this in our firm. And uh, then, uh, then my next step is uh, a tester needs to be uh, cautious during UI test, uh, testing on as most of the web pages on the Salesforce platform are visual post page, pages. The dynamic nature of visual post uh, pages needs to be paid special attention on all the element of a uh, web page that may not load at one go. I hope you are familiar with visual post post pages in Salesforce and uh, a tester needs to be very careful while uh, doing the UI testing for the same because sometimes the you uh, the visual post page does not load at one go so we need to pay a very uh, close attention to the same then uh, my next uh, tip is tester need to create functional flows including positive and negative flows to cover the entire functionality of an application Next is work, workflows using various user roles must be const, uh, constructed and tested. Test cases need to be document, uh, documented using a test management tool like uh, HP ALM or QTest. Again, I'm saying I'm using a certain uh, tools. There are many uh, test management tools which you can use. Lastly, test data needs to be prepared for uh, validating the reports functionality. So these are some Salesforce te uh, useful testing tips that I would like to give you and you can also follow the same and uh, can have a better QA process. Now next come is what is manual testing. So manual testing is the process of manually testing software uh, for defects. It requires a tester to play the role of an end user and they can uh, they can use most of the application's features to ensure correct behavior. 
to guarantee this they uh, they make test plans in advance and test upon those strategies so um, in manual testing we are just checking that the uh, products behavior is work, uh, working as per the requirement which were explained earlier mm -hmm. so uh, for this a, a tester make a test plan in in advance and according uh, and based on that test plan uh, a tester uh, will make the uh, bug sheet or you can say uh, most certainly uh, a test scenario sheet by which he will be testing the product so the manual testing consists of all these uh, four points that create, implement, explore, and recommend. We need to create uh, all the scenarios, then we need to implement them, then we need to explore on the basis of those implementation that we have done. And recommend mean, uh, by recommend here means recommend the suggestions that you can make the product more user friendly, or you can make those changes, little changes, which can make a product more user friendly. Then the part comes for the automation testing. What is automation testing? Automa automation testing is a software testing technique to test and compare the actual outcome with the expected outcome. This can be achieved by writing test scripts or by using automation uh, testing tools. Test automation is used to automate respective tasks and other testing tests which are difficult to perform manually. So, we use automation testing uh, uh, because there are certain tasks in manual testing which are difficult to perform. So, and in automation testing, we compare the actual result with the expected result. And uh, the automation testing consists of these five testing, which is load testing, stress testing, security testing, database testing, and performance testing. I, I know these are the very uh, common testing uh, which I am uh, which I am denoting over here all these testing are uh, these kind of testing are done uh, in automation with via different tools or via using different automation strategies next I would like to move on to my last segment which is advantages of automation testing again there are many more advantages of automation testing I'm just simply quoting some of the advantages which are the most uh, which are the most important ones so first one is reliable tests perform precisely the same operation each time they run and thereby eliminate eliminating the human error while we are doing auto, uh, manual testing we are human and we can uh, certainly do some uh, uh, mistakes so to prevent those we have uh, the automation testing strategies or automation tools which will be making it more reliable uh, which will be more making it more reliable because there are certain operations which we can have uh, which we can done automatically and there is no uh, you know human human interference so it will be eliminating the human error then repeatable enabling the capability to test how the software reacts under repeat repeated execution of the same operation while we are manually testing any product okay uh, then uh, we cannot repeatedly test it for like hundred times so that we can uh, we will be knowing that one such product can uh, how it's how its behavior going to be when we are going to use a software hundred times but in automation testing we can do the same because we can we have that capability that how the software reacts in repetitively in under execution of the same operation then comes the part that it is comprehensive provides the ability to build a suite of tests that covers every features in your application yes we have certain ability to build a, a module a suite of tests that can test all the covers all the features in our application and we can test the application in one go we don't have to go point wise but we can prepare a test case and then we can test the, app, the whole application in one go then comes better quality software ability to run more uh, tests in less time with reduced team size yes there uh, for example if we are manually testing and we have data like 10 lakhs 20 lakhs we cannot manually test that that will take more time and a very big team size and we are not sure that uh, the, uh, the testing done manually will be reliable or not so we have uh, certain criteria in automation testing by using automation tool uh, which we can test in less time and we 
we will be using less uh, lesser team members next come is reusable enabling reusability of test on different versions of an app application even if the user interface is changing we we can make certain test cases uh, in automation testing tool or in our scenarios which we can test on different versions of the application and which we can use on different ui uh, as well then comes the part programmable provides the ability to program sophisticated tests that bring out hidden information from the application which means they are, there are certain things at the back end when when a programmer is programming uh, for for making the product there are certain things which we can check at the back end also sometime a system collapse it, it's not because of it there is some problem at front end there is some problem at back end as well so we can write certain set of codes to check those parameters as well which we can't do manually in automation we can write a script or we can have some testing modules which, by which we can test that uh, that the pro, uh, that the product will be running fine if we have such and such unpredictable situation as well and which can be done by automation testing next part comes is fast that means automation tools run tests significantly faster than manual and this is already known that it is faster than manual as i have uh, given you the example earlier that if we have to 20 lakh data we can test faster in automation testing other than manual testing now the last is cost reduction result of produce team size rely, uh, realized by productivity gains yes this is directly proportional if we have less team size we can have cost reduction as well we are using less team members and but our work is done in lesser time so by uh, by ending i'm here this is this was the last point that i need to cover in my segment so this was the last part that was uh, that i was covering in my segment so me and Malika are really open to your questions. If you have any questions, you can uh, ask us. We, are, we will be happy to answer you all. Hi, Tom. Yes, yeah, hi. The site. So we have a question from Shivani Maheshwari. Can you yeah, see that I'm in the question panel? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm just looking into that. Hi, Somya. In this management process, we identify after control. We can identify the treatable risk here or the risk that cannot be controlled. Mm -hmm. We just have to know their consequences. We show that it is not going to cause problems in the application if deployed. Uh, in this manner, process. So, thank you for the question, uh, Shivani. The thing is, we are going to identify all kinds of risk there, uh, like which is controllable or uh, or which is not controllable. The the risks which are controllable. Uh, we can control them really well and we can tell the team, the team to treat them like that and the second uh, the second thing is that the risks which are not uh, treatable properly we need to check that once the uh, the thing is deployed it will not cause that much harm or uh, it will prevent uh, the maximum harm to the uh, product it is not causing any a problem or any hindrance in working of the product the risk will be there but we need to manage that risk that how we can prevent uh, it by then so in identification we are identifying both kind of risk which can be controllable and which can be not controllable so that we are uh, be ready and alert in in future uh, and we can treat the same accordingly i hope that answers your question really well I got the answer. Thanks, Shivani. Please ask more questions. We are really happy to answer, me and Malika.
ओके कैन यू सेंड दिस प्रेजेंटेशन थ्रू ईमेल पॉसिबल दिस इज आज बाय सैयद मोहम्मद Yes, actually, I think uh, to this yeah, Suraj uh, or Lakshya can help with the answer. You know whether they can share it via email yeah. or or on which platform this presentation will be available. So Suraj and Lakshya, please. Yeah, sure. We'll be sharing the uh, presentation as well as the video recording of this whole webinar uh, all, with all the attendees in the email. Yes, you will be getting the presentation as well. I hope. Say God has answered. Yes, he did. You're welcome, Say. Thank you. So I think because uh, some I think because our part was more easy and you know more more uh, theoretical. Yeah. So I think which is why uh, people you know our audience do not have much of the questions to ask uh, from us. So uh, yeah. you know without delaying, uh, let's hand it over to Aman. Yes. Uh, now, uh, next segment will be covered by Aman, in which he will be telling you that uh, what he is going to uh, show you in the demo, and I'm going to tell you a little thing uh, that he is going to tell you about the uh, tool named Tosca, which is used for automation. So he is going to give you the glimpse of that and going to tell you uh, something about that. Over to you, Aman. Thank you, Som. Yeah, let me share my screen. Yeah, I hope all are able to see my screen. So the uh, these are the following points I'm gonna cover today, and our first point is uh, what is Tosca. So Tosca is a software testing tool that is used to automate end-to-end -end test cases for a uh, application, software application, or we can say that uh, Tosca combines various aspects of software testing to test GUIs to APIs from a business point of view. Yeah. And a second point is why to use Tosca. So yeah, there are n number of N number of tools out there in the market, and some of them, them are also free, like uh, Selenium and APM. These tools are free and used to automate uh, test cases. So, why to use Tosca? Before answering this question, uh, I want you to know something. Uh, five out of ten people are afraid of code. Uh, they have a uh, they have a phobia to do code to to code. Yeah, like they don't like code. Like they don't understand how to code or they don't like code they have a good logic but they can't do coding so this is a major point uh, by keeping this major point in mind uh, try sentence uh, build a software called tosca uh, in which a person can automate any test case uh, ui api mobile any test case without writing any single line of code and that's the beauty of it Whatever the task you are doing on Selenium or APM, you can do all those things on Tosca without writing any piece of code. And my second point is, whenever there is a click versus code, code always uh, click always wins. Sorry, click always wins. Yeah. So uh, third point uh, is basic overview. So this is the standard UI of Tosca. I hope all are able to see this. So Tosca, you know, provide us some standard folders. These are the folders if you see here. Modules, test cases, test design, test execution. Tosca provide this folder out of the box. And yeah, this is the basic overview of Tosca. And if we uh, if we jump to our next point, like kind of testing we can do on Tosca. Uh, yeah. We can uh, let me show you like scan. We can test web application. We can test API. We can also, you know, test mobile application. And the beauty and what 
for the point which I like Tosca the most is we can also you know test Salesforce application with this. Like you know most of the tool are not able to handle Salesforce, but Tosca does it beautifully. So yeah, this is the major point of Tosca. And yeah, so I'm gonna give you a UI testing demo, a quick testing demo. And in today's demo, I'm gonna automate this page. This is a demo page. I'm gonna automate this page. How I'm gonna automate, I'm gonna show you in a minute now. Yeah, okay. So for how we start with Tosca is like, we have a module section here. If you see here, module folder. So people who worked on Java, uh, they know that we need to create different kind of objects to you know execute some task. On Tosca, we create different kind of module for which we want to automate them. So if I have to automate this web page, I have to create module for this web page. And how we create module, I'm going to show you right now. The main, the important part is naming conventions. We, uh, you know, naming convention should be like this. Uh, if a third person try to, you know, understand your module or test case, he or she, he or she should be able to understand it, you know, uh, clearly. Uh, what you what you are you know for which module is this so how we scan a page is like uh, I have created this folder on the module that is user registration right click on this and click on application so what Tosca will do now is let me just I'm waiting for it to display then I'm going to show you what it does Yeah. So what Tosca did is it open it this show me all the application which uh, are open on my PC right now. Uh, so uh, I'm I need to automate this registration form. So I'm gonna select this and click on scan. Yeah. You see here, I got different kind of elements. All the elements of this page are here, are present here. Now I need to, you know, select the element which I'm gonna use in my test case. Like I'm gonna need name, username, password. I need to select element for this fields and for these two buttons. So the easiest way to select those elements is uh, click on this option, select on string and minimize this then all you need is to click on that particular element which you want to use in your test case like i'm using these fields so and while these this buttons. is happening in between i would like to ask uh, one question aman that uh, i mean why tosca why should we need tosca because as because it is a paid tool so why we are preferring tosca then over other tools because there are so many yeah. other tools which are free. Yes, like like I told you, Selenium and APM are free tools. But you know, uh, people uh, people have good logics, but they are afraid of code. I know some people they have you know good logic. They can they uh, they have a good input to a, they provide good input to a software like how to test it, like how can we test it better. But they can't you know. Uh, implement their logic practically via coding because they are afraid of code. Most of the people are afraid of code. And on Tosca, you know, this is the beauty of Tosca. There is no, you know, need of coding. All you need is to click. And what else we need? A software engineer should have a clear logic. Uh, it doesn't matter on which platform he or she is working on. Main is logic. If there is a logic, Tosca can do anything. Whatever thing Selenium does, Tosca can also do. Yeah, and the you know slightly dis difference between Selenium and Tosca is UI and syntax. UI yeah. on Tosca, I've already showed you, like it is very user friendly. If you if you uh, if you uh, give this UI to a non-technical person, he can also understand like what is going on. But if you give a UI of Selenium to a non-technical person, uh, he or she will get 
you know, a tough time to understand what is going on. Yeah. yeah I now hope, I got the point. Yeah. yeah. It's and, more easy and, to handle uh, uh, from other products. I got my yeah. answer. And if anyone, anyone else, uh, anyone else, uh, other question, feel free to drop your question in the question box. I will try to answer them. So uh, I have selected this. I have click on this field and these two button. I have get this here. And these elements are present out here. So what Tosca does is on automation, we need to select, you know, identifiers to tell system like you need to move on this element then after on this element. So identifier should be unique. Uh, if you see here, uh, the selected item is unique. So these item which I have scanned, <clears throat> Tosca automatically select those elements, those selectors, those identifier, which help to make this element unique. And if it is not unique, then Tosca will give you a message here that, that the selected item is not unique. Then we have to make them unique. And how we make them unique is, if you see here, right, identify by properties. We have different type of elements and technicals and XPath to make these elements uniquely identified. So we can, you know, uh, we can have a common, right now we have a combination of ID and tag. So this is selected item is unique. If it is if it is not, then I can select X path and make try to make this item unique. So different kind of combination can be done here to make a uh, element unique. So uh, after this, after selecting our element, all I need is to click on save and close this window. Then we can toss. Yeah. If you, you you if you click on this drop down. Then here we have the modules with a screenshot. Screenshot is because uh, if you know uh, any one any other person see this module, then he, he or she can understand that okay, this modules belong to this page. So that's why it also automatically provides screenshot. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, these modules are custom modules because we have created them. Tosca out of the box provide uh, standard modules that I'm going to use forward in the demo. I'll show you uh, what are the standard modules Tosca provide out of the box. So we have the modules. Now I need to create a test case. So jump on the test case uh, folder. Create a test case, test case folder name. Uh, like you can, you know, give any name you want. For better understanding, I am giving the same name here and need to create a test case under it. I'm gonna, you know, work state in work. So if a third person see this test case, then he can, you know, uh, he can understand that this test case is under progress right now. So all I need is to do is. Yeah, all I need is to do is drag this module, which I have scanned right now, and drop it here on user registration. Yeah. So if you see here, all the modules which I have scanned are here. Now all I need is to provide input. Like in name field, I'm gonna input uh, a man. The name common password. And on registration, I need to perform click operation. So there are two ways. Uh, either I can use this click or I can use simple input X. I prefer to use this click because there's a difference between uh, both of these. And so our test case is great. Now I need to tell Tosca to open a web page. And how it will open is like, need to, uh, you need to click on, you know, test case and click Control T 
it will open all the modules which are present right now in my Tosca workspace. Some of them are custom, some of them are out of the box. So I'm using one out of the out of the box module, which is also standard module that is open URL. Yeah. And I'm gonna drag and drop it to the top because this is my first step to open that particular web page. I'm gonna copy this one, paste it here. Yeah. Then uh, people who worked on, you know, any testing tool, they know like we need to add some wait on time uh, for test case student properly. So there is also one out of the box feature that is T box wait. It will tell Tosca to wait for some time uh, for the page to properly load. So I'm gonna wait. Yeah. So yeah, now our work uh, test case is complete. I'm gonna change this to complete. And I'm gonna close this page. I'm gonna run this. I'm right now I'm running this in scratch code. Um, so, Aman, while uh, we are waiting, I hope you can hear me. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so uh, while we are waiting, uh, I have a question. Um, so, can Tosca test mobile apps as well? Yes, Tos you know, Tosca is very much capable to test APIs and mobile application. Uh, yes, to uh, in short, Tosca can also test mobile application. Uh, it is a, uh, And it is very easy on Tosca to automate mobile application yeah and and to automate apis it is very easy on tosca yeah any other question um yeah i have one more question but um i'll be asking that you know once you complete uh this. Yeah, okay sure so thank you so much for yeah. your answer okay thank you so uh we what tosca did is it it opened this particular page enter all the input data which i have given in test case and click on registration this is a demo site so you know nothing uh, happened uh, uh, because this is a demo website and after execution it gave me a report like what first step if open a url then the t box wait tosca wait for this first time to open to load that particular page and after loading that uh, Tosca, you know, uh, passes all the test data which I have given on test case to name, name from, to name and confirm, to name to confirm email address and click on registration. Yeah. So this uh, and suppose if I need to automate this test case on a particular day at a particular time, then what I need to do is I need to drag this test case and drop it on execution list like this drag and drop it to uh, yeah yeah drag and drop it to execution list and i will set the time i will set the date and i can also set how much time i need to automate this i need to run this test case so on the particular day and at a particular time that particular uh, that this test case will run n number of times which i have provided and it will create a, a test execution report for me and will display me uh, whether it is a pass or fail yeah so this was the quick demo of tosca if you have any doubt uh, right now we have a qa session i will try to answer most of the question yeah thank you Um, hi, Aman, it's me again, Malika. Um, so, so you know, since we are waiting for our audience to uh, drop down some of their questions and, and you know, so and later on you can answer them. I have one more question. Um, so we heard about some advantages and benefits of using Tosca yeah. and you gave us some, um, you gave us a very good demo and explaining, you know, how we can test on Tosca as well. 
Um, could you also, uh, you know, brief, uh, touch upon the cons of using Tosca and, you know, what are the challenges that uh, a QA might face while uh, working on it? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So mainly, you know, uh, I'm working on Tosca for a long period of time. Uh, I've only found one, you know, issue with it. Uh, the test case which I've created will run if the font size of this window is 100%, like it is on default. If it is more than 100%, like 110, or less than 100%, like 90, then my test case will fail. And this is the issue that PriceSynthes is working on right now uh, to solve this. But yeah, this is the only issue uh, we have right now. Yeah, that's the only issue I know with uh, related to Tosca. Of course. Thank you so much, Raman, for your answer. Soumya, Soumya Aman and uh, Malika, we have a question from Anisha and she wants to know that automation testing is more costly compared to manual testing. So is it good for a startup business? Uh, okay. So, you know, uh, if it is a startup business or a well set up business, the main thing which I, you know, uh, believe is important is quality. And by quality, you have a company, you know, uh, company status depend on quality and better quality come with better testing. And, you know, there is a limit for a QA to test uh, a particular software manually. There is a limit. And But by automation, like what you saw right now, I can run this test case 100 of times. And uh, for a for a startup company, uh, if they create a software, yeah, they will uh, they will uh, they create a software on you know development or or development environment, and then they pass it to uh, pre production, then production. So we need to test uh, that particular software in every environment. So it is you know very hard for a QA to test same particular software on every environment. So what I can do is I can create test cases for each environment in Tosca or any other testing tool. And all I just need to, you know, run that, that's all. It will give me a, you know, report that that particular software is stable or not. So what I believe is quality is more important and quality comes with, you know, automation. I believe that. I hope this answer your question. So may you can also give your feedback on this. I think you have covered most of the points that some uh, initially automation costs uh, like a bob, but it is really better than uh, the manual testing because as Aman already said that uh, we need to have a quality of the product which will come by automation itself nothing else will help in that because there are certain uh, criteria which we cannot test manually which i all also covered in my segment as well uh, so there are, and aman has also demo certain uh, points in his demo in tosca uh, which we cannot actually test manually so uh, to ensure that our uh, quality of the product is you know, being uh, really assured, we need to uh, have uh, the automation testing included, be it any, uh, you know, size of the company, be it a, be it a startup or a very uh, re uh, renowned or com uh, renowned company. Uh, so if we are initially uh, putting up some cost in the automation tool, that will in future help us to uh, bring in the profit as well because we will be testing the product in lesser time and with the reduced 
team site. I hope that answers your question, Anisha. Suraj, are there any other questions? Because uh, I didn't uh, saw the uh, saw Anisha's question in the question uh, panel. I think there are no more questions from the audience. Uh, so I think we can move ahead. Okay, so next part will be the fun part in which will be uh, we will be covering the retrospective part. Uh, so uh, what is uh, Lakshya, do you mind uh, sharing your screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will, I will present my screen. And please uh, first tell the audience that you are going to share their, uh, share them a link. Yeah, yeah, why not? So as you all can see that uh, there's a question box slash chat box in your panel where I will provide you the retrospective link. And yes, the link has been shared now. And when you click on that link, it will redirect to you to this page. And uh, then you can write any yeah. feedback or suggestion for the webinar. And from here, Soma and Malika will guide you. So now it's over to you both, Malika and Soma. So this is the idea boards and uh, for the for the members who don't know what retrospective is all about I would like to give you some glimpse of that Retros retrospective is nothing but we have clear uh, it is a kind of feedback that we are taking for a webinar we need to know certain things that as you can see in this form we have three sections and in first section we uh, we want to know that what went well in the webinar Second is what can be improved in the webinar so that uh, in our upcoming webinar we are not repeating that things. And from the what can be improved session, me or Malika would take the uh, those uh, some one, two or three points into con uh, consideration which uh, we can put into our action items and which will be we will be covering in our next webinar. So uh, we will be giving you uh, three to uh, four minutes. Uh, for writing uh, up the points in what went well and what can be improved and after three to four minutes me and Malika and Aman will be discussing the same thing uh, with all you guys So the time starts now you all can uh, access this link and please start uh, filling up uh, the form that what went well what we can improve oh.
Um, I think we're going to wait two more minutes and then we're going to start with our activity. Exactly. Okay, I think most of them have completed the part for the uh, for this retrospective thing. Right. So what? Uh, yeah. So what we will be doing is uh, we will be uh, going uh, one section uh, section wise, and then we will be uh, commenting over the same. The first section is what went well. So there are uh, certain points which these guys have poured into. Like got to learn about a new tool, found it very useful. Yes, thank you. Then comes uh, nice information. Thank you for that as well. Then the part comes should include more demos like this. So I would like to po uh, put this into the section for uh, QA for uh, what can be improved, not in what went well. So I have moved that part into that. Uh, next is uh why automation testing why not manual testing it will include increase workforce and employment so i don't know which person has asked this question but uh, uh i would like to answer this it will uh, your question is why automation testing why not manual it will increase workforce and employment it will definitely increase the employment but it is not going to profit you in the ways that you want to be uh, assured of I know you uh, you want to increase the uh, increase the employment and workforce uh, but for who if your client is not satisfied he is not going to give you more work on the same thing but if you are opting for automation testing for better uh, assurance for better clear and your clearer report so we need automation testing for that we need to bring a change and we have certain parameters in which we can include more members in such a way that it is more effective and uh, we have not the uh, bigger team size working on one feature itself we we need to have a t uh, bigger team size who is working on different features using one tool itself so it will be better in that way i hope whoever has asked put this question over there well uh, uh, has answered uh, your question so i would like to put that at the end as as well okay uh, i would like to put this at the side okay this is now next come uh, next point is there the demo for tosca was really well thank you would like to know more about Tosca and um, there should be more questions okay okay we will definitely uh, be planning for more Tosca related webinars in future so that we can showcase uh, you different uh, features which Tosca have and which in which we can test the real data so we will be definitely planning as uh, we can see audience is really curious to know about Tosca and how it works so next next part is what can be improved. Uh, Malika, uh, you can please take over from sure. here. Sure. So uh, what can be improved uh, here? We have some of the things, and uh, so I already covered two of those in um, in the section what went well. So I'll I'll be covering the ne the rest of them. 
Uh, first one is should include more demos like this. Uh, sure, we'll work on it. Um, we'll try to include more and more demos like these, uh, whichever we get, you know, in high demand and uh, what our audience are requiring of. Definitely, we'll do that. Um, need to include more examples or demos like these, of course. And I think this point and the first point are more or less similar. So I'm gonna um, simultaneously I'll be uh, you know, merging these documents, uh, both these points. Okay, uh, next is uh, any more webinars? Yes, we do. And um, Suraj and Lakshya will be talking about that once we finish with our retrospective activity. So um, we'll get to know more about that. Uh, next is non-technical part can be made more interesting. Um, we'll definitely try to make that. Although, uh, we would love to get your suggestions on, you know, how we can do it. Uh, we have a few ideas in our mind, but, you know, do share your suggestions and um, we'll definitely try and do that. Thank you for this. Um, thanks for sharing this information on COVID-19. Um, thank you so much for joining us here and, you know, um, during this time and getting uh, some time out of your busy schedule. So thank you so much. And this is more... Um, this is, I think this is more uh, for what went well part you know, rather than what can be improved. So I'm gonna uh, putting it there. Okay, for some reason, I think I, I cannot. Okay, uh, Steph, but thank you so much uh, for, for this. Uh, the next is loved your webinar. Cheers, thank you so much for that as well. Next webinar talking uh, topic again, uh, this will be, um, like I mentioned, will be covered by Suraj and Lakshya after um, a retrospective session. So uh, we'll be merging this as well. Okay, and, and the rest of the two points which were covered by Soumya already are any more QA webinar or more QA, more QA uh, rounds. Sure. And we have a one action item and somehow I think someone uh, added in here would love to learn more about Salesforce testing. Um, I think this one is That's more to the down. demo. Yeah, so yeah. I think I'll be adding it there. We need to pull okay. out uh, points for action items. One, I think Malika, one we can put uh, pour in uh, like next technical, uh, non-technical part can be made more interesting. We can put that in action item so that we will be keeping in mind for our next webinar. Sure, done. And uh, I think. Uh, uh, even the the webinar and uh, sorry the demo and and example part i think we can we can work on this and get more ideas you know work and in working so exactly. this is done what do you think the next should be yeah i think these are the two main points that uh, the audience have uh, you know put their point right focus on to so we will be working on these two points and in future for any webinar we can uh, have uh, our vision on on these two and we can pour in some points for these two uh, action items definitely definitely i totally agree and um so guys this was our retrospective uh, activity for you guys thank you so much for joining in and in being this interactive during this time um you know, it's 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 uh, a bit difficult for everyone to stay at home and work and you know manage everything else. So thank you so much for taking out uh, this much time out of your busy schedule. We are really glad that you know we are able to provide some information and help out there during this time. And thank you again. Um, over to you, Suraj and Lakshya. Thank you guys for joining in the webinar. We are really uh, thankful that uh, you have joined this webinar and stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you, thank you all. Yep. Thank you, Soumya, Malika, and Jaman. I, I really appreciate you coming over and sharing some wonderful tips about quality assurance. And it will be surely help each of us in our journey to transfer our organization. And this webinar session is recorded and you will receive a copy of it and you may use it for your personal purpose or share it with others. And as you have already asked about the upcoming webinars, yes, we have an upcoming webinar on relationship marketing with Pardot on the world's number one CRM, which will be led by Nitish, who is the 
sales for principal consultant and chief information officer at cloud energy and uh, rupali who is the sales for consultant at cloud energy and they will, will be guiding you on how to assign prospect at key steps during drip programs and this webinar will be hosted on 25th of june 2020 at uh, 3 p.m. GMT and registration for this webinar is now live so you can register for this webinar by visiting www.cloudenergy.com and uh, thank you guys for joining us today and uh, we will we will see you next time